delighted to um, have Mark Tabret, founder and CEO of Nimbly, on the show for, for our uh, fifth pitch. Thank you for coming along, Mark. Nice um, tell us about your uh, early adventures in, in the boxing arena. <laughs> boxing. Wow, that is going back quite a while. Um, yeah, I was an amateur boxer back in my university days, so kind of early 2000s. Um, took it up one day as an idea to get fit, and turns out I'm quite good at um, punching people on the head. <laughs> Sorry, maybe shouldn't say that. <laughs> so, um, featherweight, presumably. Yeah, bant bantam slash Bant featherweight. Right, okay, fantastic. Um, so yeah. No, Great, fantastic. Fun. You have eight minutes to give us your pitch for Nimbly, Mark. Okay. No Go problem. ahead. No, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for having me. Uh, really excited to be here and just tell you a little bit about Nimbly and the plans that we have over the next few months. Uh, my name's Mark. I'm the founder and CEO of the company. And um, you know, I'm here on my own, but I'll just introduce you to the wider Nimbly team. You know, so I'm the CEO with generally a finance background. I work with Jonathan and David, who are primarily in tech. And between us, we have about 13 to 14 years across financial services technology experience, which is great because we're a fintech company. So that's a good start. And we're based in London, but we're looking to launch our app in uh, originally Mozambique and East Africa, aimed at promoting financial inclusion for small businesses who are struggling to get access to finance. Now, this problem won't be immediately familiar to a lot of UK investors, so I'll just um, explain because you know, in the UK we're very lucky. Most of us have access to a bank account um, and at least have a basic credit history and access to credit or loans you know, if we need it. But that isn't necessarily the case in all other countries and it's particularly an issue for small businesses in emerging economies and developing countries. You know, um, they, uh, they play a big role in uh, the growth of these economies. They hire more than half of employees. They contribute about 40% of GDP. Um, but although there's hundreds of millions of them worldwide, actually seven in 10 of them don't get access to the finance they need to operate or invest and grow their businesses and support that growth. And this has left a huge funding gap worldwide um, of around $2.6 trillion. That's the same size as the whole UK economy. So it's a really big funding gap. And you would think that the best companies to address this gap would be the banks, the very obvious companies. But in our view, this isn't actually happening. You know, banks are taking on technology with the aim of maybe cutting costs in their business and improving their own bottom line. But we feel that they're missing the bigger picture and could be using technology to improve you know, customer value today. And beyond that, we think in future, their technology could bring benefits to customers that you know, we haven't even thought of yet or aren't even aware of. So at Nimbly, we think we could use technology to improve how things are happening today, but also you know, explore what opportunities there are in future through technology to improve personal finances. And the way we're doing that, the technology that we're specifically using, we've split into three different categories. <coughs> so. The first one is we're going to provide digital wallets to users. Effectively, that will connect your smartphone directly to a bank account and let you access the data in that account you know, at any time that the user needs it. Well, what's maybe more exciting, um, and in particular we're looking forward to, is uh, the second part. It's the big data and the machine learning. And what that will effectively do is we'll apply it to this vast amount of data and turn it into something more meaningful that will help both our users and ultimately the banks um, turn into you know, ways that we can improve credit availability to those who need it. And the third one is to do contactless transfers between mobiles. Essentially, it will be a secure way of transferring money from one mobile phone to another uh, without the need for debit cards or credit card terminals. Just basically making transfers that bit more convenient for everyone. So all of this is happening in the next month. We're launching a new smartphone app. We're expecting to launch before the end of March. And we're launching in Mozambique in partnership with one of the major banks in Africa to uh, do a pilot scheme and see whether this does help improve credit. So the premise, like I said, is to improve financial inclusion. The initial focus will be on the digital wallets and the big data and machine learning. I'd say really trying to enhance the data quality to help make more informed credit decisions and ultimately increase the bank's loan book. Uh, the transfers and contactless payments will probably be something that 
if this all works, we can build a, build a bigger ecosystem over the next one to three years. And just to kind of explain what I mean by that, you know, we're working with a bank. Nimbly ourselves, we're not a bank. We're not looking to hold deposits or offer loans or anything like that. That's why we're teaming up with a bank who are experts of doing that. Um, and they can manage that side of things. We'll provide essentially a data tech service that um, improves the quality of the data for them to make decisions with. Now, um, the ultimate goal really is to help people in Mozambique get a, a bank account, many for the first time in their lives, even as adults. There are 4 million bank accounts today out of an adult population of 15 million. So only one in four people has a bank account. So if we can start addressing that challenge through this pilot, that's where we think a good starting point would be. If it does work, we'll then speak to other banks in Mozambique to see if we can help get their customers on board and additional customers through them. But also we'll speak to mobile network operators who actually have more influence than we maybe see here in the UK in terms of how money is managed through mobile phones. But ultimately we want to try and build an ecosystem that works not just in Mozambique but maybe East Africa to help improve financial management and access to finance more generally. And in terms of the market size, and if we can do that, like I said, we can speak to other banks in Mozambique, we can look at rolling this out across East Africa, but we don't think this is solely just something for Africa and emerging markets. You know, there are, there are other emerging markets like Latin America, and maybe parts of Asia that could benefit with financial inclusion support. But even in Europe and in North America, in developed economies, we think that there is a place for our app to help people just manage their finances that bit better and help those, uh, maybe not as obvious, but there are people who still don't have access to finance, even though it's on a much smaller scale in developed economies. So just to kind of finish up with some financials. Nimbly, thank you very much, Mark. Eddie, very much your sector. So I, very interesting. I'm, I'm intrigued by um, what a Nimbly app in Mozambique looks like compared to, say, a Revolut app or a UK challenger banking app. Is it different, basically? Mm -hmm. um, there aren't, there's actually a lot of similarity. Uh, we originally started building an app for the UK market. You're maybe familiar with open banking, sure. PSD2. So uh, we were building that with that market in mind. And then I came across an executive at our banking partner, who's based in Mozambique, and he explained how he felt fintech and banks could work together to access um, and help support you know, the issue I've just ex described with the financial inclusion. And there was a lot of similarities. You know, it's all about gathering huge amounts of data, turning it into something meaningful that's useful, and then present it not just to the banks to help them make decisions, but also to the user just to manage their finances a bit better and hopefully help run their business more efficiently than they could. So there's a lot of overlap between the two, and that's why it was quite an easy switch over for us. Okay. I mean, you also mentioned quite interestingly that you would kind of allow more innovation to emerge, mm -hmm. and you sort of criticise UK banks a bit. And there's some truth in that, I think, to some extent, but they're more mature markets and they have more stable, stable sort yeah. of base of users. Mm -hmm. but they can't just you know, do anything. So do you have in mind any innovations that you might introduce into mm -hmm. the uh, sort of African market? into the African market, yeah. Um, so I think the big data and machine learning itself is quite a big innovation. So okay. for context, we're using the big data to allocate expenditure you know, for the, each customer. You'll have seen that with like Monzo. Um, you know, it's quite a simple way of just improving transparency. But where we're going a bit further, and we haven't seen this in Africa or any other market, is that the machine learning will take that data and the trends over time, and we can use that to project balances forward. So you'll be able to look at future cash flow over however many months you want to look at. We'll say the further out you go, the less um, credible it could be. But it would at least <coughs> provide some short-term kind of clarity on where your finances look like they could be headed. And if there's an issue, if your bank balance is going to go overdrawn, you can take corrective action now. So that's on the, the business side. On the bank side, they can look at that and say, you know what, you look like you're managing your business quite well. We feel comfortable enough to give you a loan. And in an emerging market like that, even a loan of $20, $30 could be a huge amount of money to a micro SME just trying to make it through the rest of the month. So I think that's quite novel. Okay. 
How are you going to address the logistics of rolling out into other international territories, take Latin America, for mm. example? Yeah, so um, we haven't looked at how we'd roll out into it just yet because um, the reason we focused on Africa is because we came across a partner who's there to support us. And we think collaborating with a big bank that is already established, understands the market, is key to making this work. So we're going to work with them, do the best job we can with this pilot. If it works, they've already said they would look at exporting it potentially across their other subsidiaries in East Africa. So it's a big bank. They operate in more than 10 countries in the continent already. But we feel confident that if we can demonstrate that this works in Mozambique or East Africa, that there will be other banks that will, will potentially want to partner with us in Latin America or elsewhere. And we've actually had um, recently a bank uh, in Asia approach and ask us more about it because they're you know, kind of interested in what we're doing and seeing if it could perhaps work in you know, an East Asian country. Fantastic. Okay. Um, Eddie, anything else for Mark? Um, no, we've I'm got, done. We've got I'm a done. minute left. So, <laughs> Mark, sorry, I rambled on. We, um, just to remind you that uh, Nimbly is currently raising on Crowdcube. Um, and thank you very much for joining us, Mark. That was a great pitch. Fascinating. That was Nimbly. Um, Mark Tabret, the co-founder and CEO.